but then you have the situation where these talented schools, these gifted schools like in New York City, uh, turn out to be able to get because they it's all on the test. It's a extremely meritocratic system. And Asian students are just kicking ass, and the majority including they're like, poor Asian students from poor families. Poor, poor families. Some of them first generation, not speaking English to the home to start with, but are making incredible strides. And partly because also they have these incredibly devoted families that they also were self-selected as immigrants to some extent to be more entrepreneurial, more aggressive, and maybe self-selected also because the people that tend to be able to immigrate to the United States tend to be smarter than the population they generally come from. Uh, well, I'm, I'm presenting these arguments because <laughs> no, they're, they're, no. they're real, but they're, they're nonetheless, real. Real. and they, they carry some salience. Um, my, my question is, if therefore, that one should look and say, well, what's going wrong? Uh, what is going on with the the up the upbringing of black kids? What is happening in the home structure? What is happening in early development? What is happening when you live in a in an environment which is riddled with crime and insecurity? What happens when you never when you see your dad every other couple of weeks, or or in, or your dad has plenty of other kids somewhere else that you? I mean, these are these are things you could tackle. Now they're very difficult to tackle. How do you? really have but it's much easier to say well let's just fix the percentages and just uh and just make sure this is equitable and that obviously anything that doesn't do that is itself racist now let's also say this about the current argument that it's moved a little bit it's not really saying that everyone is racist as such i mean they've now redefined the word racist to mean that, no, the systems that you've unwittingly created are themselves perpetuating racism. And insofar as you are complicit in that, in sustaining those institutions and that kind of society, you are complicit in racism. Now, let's say, for example, that a society isn't governed by and isn't motivated by G. Let's say, let's say that's not really how you should judge a society. And I think you and I would agree with that, right? Yeah. Isn't there some logic to say, well, then why do we have to have the same standards for everyone? Why shouldn't one group uh, be given more slack than the other? Um, uh, a sort of kind of bell curve leftism kind of thing. Okay, so but here's what happens. It's the old story that the elites are in favor of policies that they themselves can avoid. It is an empirical statement of fact that the mean IQ of K-12 teachers who are white is on the order of 14, 15 points higher than the mean IQ of K-12 teachers who are black. Is IQ the only important thing that goes into being a teacher? Obviously not. All sorts of other things are important too. Is it true that if you take a large group of teachers and one of them is uh, 15 points lower on average than the other, is there gonna be a difference in the quality of teachers? Yeah. Are there going to be a larger number of incompetent teachers who are black? Yeah, that's also true. It's inescapable in large samples. Guess who won't be sending their kids to those schools? People with money to send their kids to other schools. And the same thing goes with uh, affirmative action in, well, let's say government hiring, because the most sweeping aggressive affirmative action is in government at all levels, with city government being one of the most. Okay, so who does that affect? Well, it affects who is accepted for police and firefighting training and who gets promoted, and those are things that are important to everybody. Uh, and it affects uh, the quality of the prosecutors, uh, and public defenders, that public defenders don't affect the affluent so much, but, but you know they probably want good prosecutors. You know what it really affects is the quality of the people in the public in the social services departments. And so, if you have really aggressive affirmative action, uh, you have a a much less efficient level of government services than you would have without it. And who is it that? has to make the most use of navigating social service departments, it's the poor who are disproportionately minorities. You very seldom hear anybody point out that aggressive affirmative action probably has important deleterious effects on the services that black people receive. But it's it's probably true. Now, in all of this, I, I hear my voice 
sounding clinical about here's what the test scores say and this, that, and the other thing. And listeners out there saying, well, what an asshole this guy is in, in the, being so dry and cool and unemotional about it. Well, it's about time that we tried to separate out the emotional aspect of this from the need to confront a lot of these things as factually, as empirically as possible. When you said a few minutes ago to, to, to talk about this, and you used very eloquent language, you know, it's in effect you were saying how deeply wounding this is to all sorts of people who don't deserve to be wounded. You were absolutely right, okay? It's, it's one of, it, it is perhaps the most difficult thing to talk about of any of the topics. We are at a moment in our history where we must do it. But there's one thing that, that I can at least add to that, that the high IQ people out there have got to come to grips with. It is a completely unearned gift. Uh, we don't have to argue about the role of environment and genes and IQ, whatever it is. You were born in circumstances, whether a combination of genes and environment or what, whereby you end up with a 145 IQ or whatever it may be. That's not merit. You have nothing to do with it.